The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 21st, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got all U.S. indices, all sectors in the S&P 500. Pretty much most things trading to the downside. Microsoft's up three bucks. Netflix up 13 cents. In U.S. dollar. That's the little booger up there. It's about two, 287 uh, pips right now, trading at 105.07 or thereabouts. So you got the Dow down 161. The S&P up 41. Nasdaq 100, 157. Russell's down 21. Gold's off 26. Silver 22 pennies is downside. Natural gas off two cents, and the 30-year Treasury's down two points and five ticks, trading out at 116.13. Lead the charge. Dollar-wise, the upside. You got Splunk. Uh, as a result of a uh, buyout up 25 bucks, facts at research fifteen dollars. Humana's up twelve. FedEx is up eleven. United Health Group is up eleven. To the downside, Mercado Libre off twenty six bucks. Eli Lilly down twenty one. Broadcom off twenty one. HubSpot seventeen. And Adobe's down fifteen points. Let's begin by taking a look at the uh, equity future contracts out here. What are you going to be watching for today? Well, first. We've got the ES Mini upper left hand side testing its swing point. Now, this is a swing point from August 18th. That level, that key level to be watching is 4397.75. I think we were one point below that or above that today. 4398.75. Yeah, one full point above that. Now, if price closed below 4397.75, volume or not, that would trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. The one to one price projection, 4310. The NQ. It's just trading inside its swing point. This is the swing point from August the 18th, uh, August 18th. And so the range there is from 14,792.75 to 14,982. Price would need to close 14,792.75 to trigger an A to B equals CD to downside. Initial price projection, 14,384. The Dow Equity Future contract is trading into its swing point. Its swing point that it's dealing with is from August the 25th. And that would require a close below 34,399 to trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. The Russell 2000, its daily time frame already has an A to B equals CD pattern. It's one to one price projection, 1766. We're trading at 1804 right now. That's what's going on on a daily basis. I will be unable to host a show tomorrow. So let me give you the most important thing for you to be watching. And that's gonna be the bottom of its weekly profile, it being the ES Mini. And that's really the only thing that you need to focus on tomorrow to understand whether there's going to be a change in trend as of the close tomorrow. We're looking at the future contract here. Why is that? Well, if you take a look at the blue and the red arrows that I've got on my screen, first the level is going to be the bottom of that profile, 4426. Well, you know what? That's because it's on this chart here. Um, give me a moment here. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. Would you give me a moment? Um, now, the level that I want you watching for is 44.2450, 44.2450. 
You're priced close and below that. And really, actually, on this futures contract here, it's okay to use this, too, because uh, it's, we're going to use them both, 44, 26, 82. So those are the two numbers to be watching. Why? Because if price closed above it, all this was was a test of support. If price closes below it, it tells us about a change in trend. If we take a look at coming off the lows out here from March of 2020, and you take a look at all of the times price got down to the bottom of the weekly profile. So that's why I say it's going to be okay to use my synthetic version of this contract as well. Each time price got down there, that was the buy the dip area. But once price cracks, when I mean cracks, I mean closes below the bottom of a weekly profile. That tends to signal a change in trend. That doesn't mean there's not bounces. It tells us that the trend has shifted to the downside. So watch those areas. Right now, what we've seen coming off of the lows out here, off this move from October of 2022, we've seen a couple of tests and rejections of those areas, bottoms of profiles. So watch that like a hawk. Again, those numbers are going to be 44.26 and 44.25. So we'll just use 44.25 as the uh, number out there to be watching for at tomorrow's close. Again, I won't be able to be with you. So that's what's going on inside the daily and really some weekly equity future contracts out here. Now let's shift over and do a deep dive into the ESP. By the way, we're market breadth negative for all time frames out there. So we've just got that as we go take a look at these ES mini charts. Now, when I say I was really referring to the daily, the weekly, the 240 and the 60, I'll take a quick peek here on my other screen see where we're at with regard to a 30 minute time frame and a 30 minute time frame we are also very bearish so we're bearish with regard to market breadth across the board as we take a look at the es mini charts out here so on a weekly basis we've really already covered for you um what to be watching of course it would trigger an a to b equals cd to the downside if price closes below its swing point so that level out there again is going to be 43.9775 so that's a level that price must close below in order to really trigger the A to B equals CD. Now, if it does that, we know we had a one-to-one -one price projection of around 43.10, but we can see at 41.9475 is the TD nine count breakout area. Those would be the price target zone. That would be the price target zone from a weekly standpoint, Peter. Peter's looking at the long-term and the short-term prognostication. On the daily time frame, we've really already covered that because we've got, again, that same swing point. That was a bullish morning star candle, so you close below that. Again, it being 43.9775, that triggers an A to be equal CD to the downside. 30 minute chart. What do we have out here? Not much. Uh, it needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a erodes momentum indicator bottom, and that's going to need a close about 44.19 to suggest a further rally. That further rally would take us to 44.38.50. 44.38.50, if price were to get up there, that's where the counter trend move should end. If price gets above it, it says this could be more than a counter trend. If we take a look at the 60 minute time frame chart, it is in bar number eight right now. Bar number eight completes at 12 noon. Bar number nine completes at one, and the final bar at 2 p.m. It says that between basically 12 noon and uh, 2 p.m., you could get a TD nine count bottom. However, the 120 minute chart says, I don't know what you guys are talking about. It negated its TD nine count right out of the shootout there. It says it wants lower price at 240, wants lower price, the five hour chart wants lower price. So, looking for signals here, Peter, on an intraday basis, I'd be watching the 30 minute because that does have the potential for roads to indicator bottom, and then the 60 minute because it's got the potential to form a TD nine count, but not really until about. 12, 1, 2 o'clock today. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at the XLE, the IWM, ABGO, and SGBX. Be right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Hey, before we get to some of those instruments uh, requests out there from Hector, David, and Dan and uh, ELO, uh, I want to come back to the, uh, the to the general markets here, just so I just just so I give you guys a real clear picture of what what we're looking at. Now, this chart that you're looking at on your screen here, is the top portion is the ES mini, center portion is U.S. dollar index, and the bottom portion is the directional correlation uh, over a 10-day average between the two. Bars to the downside tell you about an inverse relationship. Bars to the upside tell you about a direct relationship. So over a 10-day average right now, we can see it's primarily an inverse relationship. Why is that important? Because if the uh, if the S&P 500, the equity markets are going to continue to move lower, the U.S. dollar index likely needs to continue to move higher. At least that would be the path of least resistance out there. So we've got that out here. So now that means let's go take a look at what's going on inside the major currency pairs. When I say major currency pairs, it's the three major currency pairs. It's the euro, the yen, and the pound. The three of those combined represent 83% of the total index. Index. Now, in the case of the euro right now, it has tested and it has held its buy the D point pattern. And as long as price remains above 1.0632, that pattern is in effect. Now, even though it's got to buy the D point pattern, conditions are neutral. And they're neutral because that red oscillator and change line at 1.066 continues to act as resistance. However, if that fails and price closes above that, we should see a further rally inside the euro. That would mean we would see the U.S. dollar index move lower. So you want to keep an eye on 1.0632 and 1.0667, let's call it. We take a look at the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen, right now, it's got a key reversal bar. It's also got a bearish engulfing candle. Why is that important? Because there's a Rosemont indicator signal that's been triggered. And if we get that bearish reversal candle at day's end, this says that the Japanese yen should move lower. That means it would get stronger, and then the U.S. dollar index would get weaker. So right now, the first two currency pairs are represent 57.6 and 13% 13.6% of the weighting are saying, hey, Hold on a second here. We may just get him back to support inside those equity markets and getting ready to turn back around and continue the consolidation. Lastly, we'll take a look at the Great British Pound. The Great British Pound represents about 12%. Now, it is in wave number seven. That's letter G. There's no other bottom signal. Now, it does have an A to B equals C to the downside. So a bullish reversal candle would confirm a bottom there. But what's really key for the pound is price must close above the red oscillator and change line. Currently printed at 1.2388. So 
It's got a potential lobotomy signal there, but the yen and the euro are the ones to really be keeping an eye on. Now, we don't have to just stop there in the daily time frame. We can try to get a feel for what's going on on the intraday time period. To do that, we're going to stick with our 30-minute charts out here. And here on a 30-minute basis, you can see a nice TD9 count bottom inside the euro. That formed this morning. And now what we've seen here is price has, was that, yes, uh, was that yesterday? That might have been yesterday or last night. Hold on, let me tell you. Yeah, 2300. That was uh, last night at 11 o'clock. So you've got a nice TD9 count bottom. And what's transpired here is price has tried to break out. To break out, it needs to close above its breakdown level. That's at 1.066. Didn't we use a 1.066 level on the daily time frame? We did. That was a red oscillator and change line. So we know that that is real key area. If that area fails, that's signaling something to us. It's certainly signaling that we should see the U.S. dollar index move lower. Now, that would be good or presumably good for equity markets and metals out there. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, no bottom in sight here. In fact, if anything, it negated a TD9 count bottom. It's got an A to B equals CD to the downside. It should continue to strengthen, meaning go lower. That would weaken the U.S. dollar index. And finally, when we take a look at the Great British Pound, it too, like the euro, formed a TD9 count bottom. It did that. I believe that was also at uh, no, it wasn't at 11. That was at uh, 7:30 this morning. So you've got a TD9 count bottom there. But price is going to deal with the real key area to be watching on the pound if it's going to make any kind of really real rally up to the 1.23 level. Well, it turns out at 1.23, we've also got a TD9 count breakdown level. So it's very easy with regard to understanding what the euro, the message for the euro or the yen is. They're likely going to go target those resistance levels. Can they take them out? If they take them out on a short-term basis, a 30-minute, it's giving a signal to you and I that we may see more of a rally in those currencies, and we may see U.S. dollar weakness. So I certainly wanted to cover that. That's a portion of really what Peter was asking about with regard to taking a look at the ES mini out there. All right. So now let's go move on. Let's get over to some of our requests out here. The first one coming in from Hector and Patty. And uh, they're having a wonderful day out in uh, California. And the question was about the XLEs specifically. So let me change panels here. Actually, I'm not going to change. No, I've got to change panels no matter what. Let me, let me do this here. Let me come over to the white background charts. We're going to shift to the black background charts in a, a moment out there because what we're talking about are A to B equals CD patterns and so on. So I want to be able to, uh, to take a look at uh, that. Where did I put that stuff, though? Um, uh, that's not where. Wow. Well, Stevie. Okay. Uh, actually, we don't even need to. So with regard, at least with regard to the XLE. So with regard to the XLE, what we have here is a Rosemont, we've got a Rosemont indicator top, a wave seven top out there. But more importantly, we've got price below profile. Now, what we don't have out here at this moment in time, Hector and Patty, is any kind of A to B equals CD to the downside. If I read your email correctly, then I think that's what you were asking about. So instead, what we have here is we've got a top in place with price below profile support. What that brings into play is its breakout level. That's at 87.54. So odds favor, that's where the XLE is headed to. On a weekly basis, we covered this yesterday, a TD nine count top. Price is now inside of its profile. Don't know where it will close tomorrow, but if it does close inside its profile, tells us that price should go target 88.63. That's its oscillator and change line. The top of that profile is 90 bucks even Steven. We take a look at the monthly time frame chart. We've got a TD9 count that is still in effect out here. We've seen uh, three times price trying to break through this 9331 level. Has not been able to do that. Maybe price is going to pull back to 8811. So overall, the areas I'd be watching are 8811, 8863. And if those areas fail, odds favor we're getting down to 8754. So no A to B equals CD pattern, Hector and Patty when it comes to the XLE, at least to the downside, and I hope that that answered your question. I know that you had a question about uh, the uh, IWM, which we sort of covered, but let me switch over to the black background charts for that. Actually, let me switch. Let me stay here for just a moment. Let's take a quick peek, see if there's any patterns out here that we need to be aware of when it comes to the IWM on a daily basis. The answer is no. Bar number five on a weekly basis, no. Nothing for us to pay attention to on a monthly basis. A consolidation and price may be targeted as bullish structured support level, Hector, and that's between 170.64 and 173.82. But you were specifically asking about the A to B equals CD patterns out here. So we'll switch over to those black background charts, and here we'll see the A to B, the daily. A to B equals CD for the IWM. Price closed below 181.94 yesterday, the day before. Uh, it has done it with lighter volume. Doesn't matter. 
You're now down below that swing point of 181.94. Its price target or initial price target is 175. Oh, five. The retracement along that B to C leg was very close to a 0.618. It was 59.01%. So odds favor that maybe this just does a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. If you get a bullish reversal candle, that would generate a Gartley buy pattern. So 175.05 is the price target area for the IWM. So Hector and Patty, uh, congratulations in helping your daughter do what she's doing out there. Enjoy your time. And uh, hopefully that covers your A to B equals CD patterns. We get back from this break, we're going to take a look at Avgo for David. He wants to know if the gap from May 25th will get filled. SGBX for Dan. And then for ELO, we're going to go take a look at Eli Lilly. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the 30-year Treasury down uh, almost two and a half points. It's trading out at 116.05. We're going to discuss this with uh, John, Mr. Z, inside the Tiger's Den. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well, and thank you for taking the call. And uh, my pleasure. And all my eyes again on your Friday, even though uh, you'll you. probably be back on Monday. I will. I'll be back on Monday. Just uh, can't, can't host the show tomorrow. Got to go to a wedding. With, so uh, nice to have the, so. Uh, with the bond futures... Uh, in decline acceleration mode, 
yeah. making new lows for the past couple of years, please kindly pull up your weekly or your monthly charts. And with your projection tools, just share with us what, you know, what the, um, uh, what the calculations uh, show as lower levels in which ABCDs are met and all that sort of jazz. I'd just like to see that. Uh, and this will be of no consequence to any of us on trade decision making right this minute, but just kind of looking ahead, having that information, I'd be, uh, I'd be grateful. And sure. I will uh, listen off air. Thank you. Okay. Sounds, that sounds great, John. Thanks for calling and uh, happy to help you out here. So the very first thing that uh, we're going to take a look at on a weekly time frame. Now, I have the continuous contract up on my screen, folks, and that's because I need to be able to access enough data to be able to provide John with any kind of A to B equals CD patterns and so forth out here. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to come back and I want to take a look at since the high on a weekly basis that formed out. Let me get my cursor. This is the high that formed the weekend at April 7th. Since that time period, if you use part of the Chapman wave out here, what you'll see is we are in wave number seven now this week. And so that needs a higher low. What John knows, um, uh, courtesy of Saratoga Bob, used to be a, uh, inside the uh, den out there, who always traded those seventh wave moves, John. Uh, you are now in wave number seven out there. So you may have known that, maybe you didn't, but you certainly know it now. We have a TD nine count pattern that's also in play out here right now. And that TD nine count would get negated with a close below that low. And that low out there is at 117.18 out there. So if tomorrow we get a close below that, that pattern gets negated, but we still have a wave number seven. Now, the question is always, do wave number sevens have an impact inside of the 30-year treasury? Turns out the last bottom that formed out here, that was in October, October 28th to be exact, that was a wave number seven pattern. Now, that could not have been confirmed until the following week because the lower low just continues that pattern out there. So on a weekly basis, that's the first thing that uh, sticks out to uh, Stevo. With regard to A to B equals CD patterns, I've drawn in the A to B for at least the first pattern that's out there. If we move that over to the um, C point out there, we'll see we had that first A to B equals CD pattern that was also confirmed back here on November the 18th. So you had a TD9 count that was confirmed on a weekly basis back on October 21st, and the following week was wave number seven. Uh, well, that was really confirmed on November 4th, and then you had a bullish engulf, a bull sash candle to confirm the buy the D point pattern. So you had all kinds of patterns out there. Now, the question is, how do you draw in the A to B equals CD to the downside here for a price projection? I would use more of a conservative approach here. That conservative approach, we here we had the, uh, and that conservative approach would really start, but you can do however you want to. I'm just using a conservative method. For that A to B equals CD pattern, I'd start with the high from August the 5th out there. So we're just simply going to draw the line from that high down to the low, that wave seven low. And I'm just simply going to move this over to then the high that took place after that lowest low back on October 28th. Well, the one to one price target there, John, is going to get us into the 107 ish area out there. Hope I'm, yeah, I'm showing that on my screen. So that's where the A to B equals CD patterns come in, whether we look at a daily or a weekly or a monthly time frame. Now let's just simply take a look at the daily time frame. And on a daily basis, we don't have any kind of a bottom signal out here. We are in bar number five right now, bar number six right now. We have price moving lower to with less relative energy. Price looks like it's going to take out its TD9 count bottom from August 22nd. So this needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm its next bottom. Odds favor, it continues to move lower to sideways or what have you. Maybe it forms a TD9 count pattern, but that would not be until sometime next week out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the 30-year. You've got a potential bottom on the weekly. Daily looks like it's going to continue to move lower out here. Um, I don't see on the intraday basis. What else do I have? I have only two things to share with you. Watch the 30-minute time frame chart. It will go ahead or it should go ahead and complete now, I don't know if it will or not. If price closes below, so let's make sure I give you the accurate data. If price closes below 116.09, as we come into 12 noon, you will then have a TD9 count bottom with the pattern completing at 12.30. That should then take price up to its oscillator and change line. We can see that's acted as resistance. And if you can get above there, then you're looking to move to about the 116, um, about the 117 level is where I would call it. On a 60-minute time frame, you are going to form bar number eight or should form bar number eight as we come into 12 noon close. This says you 
you could get a bottom between 12 noon and 2 p.m. On a 120-minute time frame chart, you already have a TD9 count bottom. Now, the current candle that we're in here closes at, at 12 noon. So if price closes below... 116.08, that pattern gets negated, suggests lower price out there. So, uh, again, intraday, all we can do is really just kind of watch these signals. I focus mostly, I guess, on the 30-minute uh, uh, time frame chart uh, to try to understand any type of counter trend moves. If you're our short bonds out there, um, that's about as best as I can come up with. So, John, I hope that that provided you with the information you were looking for and... I'm just going to assume that that is yes. But if not, let me know, and I'll be happy to uh, get uh, back uh, to it. So that's the 30-year Treasury. Let's now go on to a uh, request coming in from uh, David in Panama City. And David wanted to take a look at Abgo out here. Abgo Broadcom, his question is, and let me get back to it actually on this set of charts here. Let me go AVGO, AVGO, oops, AVGO. And uh, we're going to, let me close down these uh currency charts. They're hogging up some of my resources, that's for sure. So give me a moment to do just that. And then now we're going to get to Avgo. If you give me a moment, we're going to switch charts here as well. Switch screens, I should say. So we'll get to the black background screen out here. The question was very specific. And that very specific question was, and I was on the daily time frame, and uh, David is short. And his question is, will price get back to this gap that formed back on May 25th, May 26th out there? And the price point level he's looking at would be between 732 39 and let me give you the uh, the entire gap and I know his question was really will fill that entire gap and that would be a 732 39 but it is a sign of strength as well so 747 42 is another area here's what I can really share with you and that is this you have a A to B equal C to the downside that formed yesterday that formed with lighter volume yesterday's volume was 1.3 million shares the B point at 2.7 million shares now today you're at 2.3 you're going to have volume today but what you've done is or what this has done is achieve the one-to-one -one price target area. Oh, you were not seeing it. Now you're seeing it. Here, this is the daily time frame chart for Avgo. As you can see, the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD with a price projection of 793.52. Price so far, the low 795.09. Watch for a bullish reversal candle. If you do not get one, that's signaling to you and I that price should make its way down towards that gap. What we need to do is take a look at my other charts, just see if there's any other signals here that you need to be aware of when it comes to Broadcom. So now let's go switch over to those white background charts, see if there's anything there, and there's not. You're in bar number three on a daily basis of a TD9 count. You're below profile on the weekly basis. 781.06 is a likely price target. That is the monthly oscillator and change line. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, folks, so uh, one last thing on uh, Abgo here. This is for David. Um, and, and David, yeah, what I have up on my screen right now are the consecutive days higher and closer. Uh, higher higher or lower out there? Higher and closer. <laughs> higher and lower. You can see we're in bar number five today of consecutive moves to the downside. Now, this chart takes us back one full year. The largest number of consecutive moves lower out here have been seven days. That took us into the lows of June 26th, and you saw a nice little rally out there. So you are uh, in uh, day, bar number five. That says that, you know, tomorrow or Monday should be some type of bottom where there's some type of rally, and that's going to impact your uh, options positions out there. That's about the best that I can do for you um, with regard to trying to prognosticate where uh, price is going with regard to Avgo by uh, next uh, next week out there. So I hope that that helps you out um, and uh, best of luck to you, whatever decision is that you make. Let's get on to our next instrument. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. He wants to take a look at SGBX. SGBX, it's trading at about, let me find out exactly what it's trading at. It's trading right now on my other screen at a buck ninety four, and this is Safe and Green Holdings out here. Now, Safe and Green Holdings having a stellar day out there. You've got uh, big volume behind it, five point two million shares today. You know how many volumes? How, how many shares traded yesterday? Thirty eight thousand. That's what we call a sign of strength. Now, that sign of strength is taking us up above the top of its daily profile, 165. So this looks pretty good. Now, it's triggered a rodemontum indicator signal. That requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm a cell that a, uh, a rodemontum indicator top. There's also an A to B equal CD pattern that is in play out here. The one to one is going to take us up towards. Give me a second here. We'll move this over to the C point. That would be right there. We are above now the one to one A to B equals CD. So just simply be on the lookout for any kind of bearish reversal candle. Short of that, price should continue to move higher out there. ACGL. Wow. <laughs> okay. We'll definitely take a look at that. But uh, um, as we take a look at, uh, so just watch for a bearish reversal candle. That would be bad news on a weekly basis. Price right now is trying to take out its TD nine count breakdown resistance. This is telling us first at a nice TD nine count bottom back in March. Of this year, now you're, if it can close the month or the week uh, tomorrow above 169, tells you you really have a change in trend. Now I'd say it's giving us that signal anyways because its TD nine count top was taken out a couple of weeks ago, but closing above 169 would uh, really be a positive. Again, you still have the A to B equals CD pattern out there, so you got to watch for that daily bearish reversal candle. And the monthly chart, there's no information there to worry about. On a 30-minute basis with regard to SGBX out here, I don't see any kind of a top as we speak right now. Uh, you're in bar number seven. That is for, well, I take that back. And no, I don't take that back. I don't really see any kind of a top just yet, but you are going to get to wave number seven candle, A to B equals CD here. Watch for bearish reversal candle on the intraday charts just to look for some type of short-term pullback out there. So Dano, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. If not, let me know, and we'll be happy to get back to it. Now, last thing out here, you are in 
bar number three of consecutive days higher. This has had seven consecutive, the most recent one was a seven consecutive bar move that led to a high on September the 8th out there. So nice sign of strength in this and uh, best of luck to you in that trade. Uh, ELO inside the Tigers that wanted to take a look at Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly is struggling today. LLY is a ticker symbol out there. It is down. Where is it going to go, Target? Well, it should Target 543. At 543, you're at 544.58 right now. At 543, that's the TD 9-count breakout level. If price, in fact, closes below that, that's going to suggest we have a change in trend. Now, we had a wave number 7. We had a TD 9-count top out here. So um, you've got the tops. Now, if 543 fails, where is price? Price headed to? Excellent question. Hmm. We're going to have to go with the next level that I see out here is 464.86. So watch 543. That's going to be muy importante. Now, on a short term basis, and when I say short term, I'm referring to 30 minute charts out here. This has triggered a Rose momentum indicator signal that requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. We can also see that we are in bar number eight of a TD nine count. So this could form, let me just make sure we made a lower low. It looks visually looks like we did. Let me just make sure that low, 545.67, 545, yeah. So you have formed bar number, or you're forming bar number eight right now. It completes in 13 minutes. You could get a TD nine count bottom between 12 noon and, uh, and 1 p.m. And that would then suggest that Eli Lilly should bounce up into the uh, 557.22 type area out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the charts for Eli Lilly. Nicholas writes in, and Nicholas is in, he's trading one of those volatile instruments. That's the UVXY. He's made some good money here. And his question is, should he sell, buy, or hold, basically? And that's a tough thing when it comes to the UVXY. The UVXY... I think at one time, let me check on my black background charts um, here. I think I had a, I've got a UVX trading plan that is on a two or three minute basis and it uses TAS market profile. So let me see if I can find that. That's very weird. Everything is really out of order. What the heck? All right. So that must have been sorted by date. Um, please bear with me and give me a moment to, to find that so I don't have to rebuild it. UVXY trading page. Okay, I do have one. So let's switch over. Here's the only way that I've been able to identify how to possibly trade this little bugger out here. And that is when you get to the black background screens. Yeah, it was a three minute time frame. Now, you know, you'd want to, you want to have access to the profile levels out here. And it's just simply something as simple as making sure that price does not break through support. And here, if we take a look at it, we've got price that broke through support at 11.45. Again, we're looking at a three-minute chart out there. So that's the first signal of potential waning momentum to the upside. It's not the best of systems, but it's a pretty darn good system when it comes to trading these volatile uh, positions, these fall, you know, UVXY, which is one of those. If I put out a five-minute time frame out here, you'll see right now that price is back at support, and that's the bottom of its profile. So let's go with that as your signal out there. And that says if you see a close on UVXY below 1503, certainly two consecutive closes, odds favor that this is going to continue to move lower out there. So that's about the best that I could do. There's no reason really for us to look at those charts out there uh, on a daily basis or anything. You've got to find some type of intraday time period out here to assist you with that uh, trade. So uh, the other thing, you know, that you can do is uh, you're also paying attention to what's going on inside the S&P 500, the ES Mini. We've talked about how equity futures are testing that key swing point level of 4397.75. If that area holds, that would also have me exit that position and take those nice profits that you have. If price closed below it, well, then I would be suggesting we could see lower price inside the S&P 500, the ES Mini, and then maybe you want to only take a portion of that trade off and hold on to it. You've also got the NQ testing a key level. It's the ES Mini that's going to have more of an impact. But if the NQ holds 14980 then that's uh, a signal that we could see a uh, bounce to the upside out there, and presumably that would send UVXY to the downside. So those are the types of things, Nicholas, that I would be looking at to assist you with that trade. So right now we've got the Dow down 139, the S&P off 42, NASDAQ down 172, the Russell's down 19 points, semis off 29, U.S. dollar index still up 267 ticks, lights we crude up 28 pennies, and uh, we will be back in just a few moments.
Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Back, folks, we're going to go take a look at our last request out here. This is from uh, Joe, who wants to take a look at GDX. His specific question is, has this bottom? Now, you'll see that yesterday was bar number eight of a TD9 count. This would only form a TD9 count if price were to close today above uh, 29.72. So we're not going to have a TD9 count top out here, likely. And what price has done is it's pulled back and has tested a key level of support. That key level of support is that red oscillator and change line. That is currently printed out, Joe, right now at 28.89. This can be the sign of a bottom. But, of course, it's all going to depend upon what that U.S. dollar index is doing. We took a look at that in the beginning of the show. If you didn't catch that, go back and watch the replay of this. So it isn't a potential bottom. Now, price closes below that level. We're going to see the GDX make a run for 27.53 out there. So I hope that that helps you out. So to finish off the last minute here, let's just go into one of my Japan stories out there. So one of my favorite sakis, it's called Kakunko. It's uh, made by the oldest, I didn't know this at the time, it's made by the oldest sake distillery in Japan. It's been around for over a thousand years. Uh, 1140, I believe, was the first year produced sake. So that's my favorite sake. Um, I have not been able to get this in the U.S., but I was able to get my hotel concierge to get in touch with the president of the company. They shipped four bottles to my hotel. 
We drank three of them. We were over there to sell my, celebrate my birthday. We went to this place called Sushi Iwa. Sushi Iwa turns out that it is one of Steve Jobs, when he was alive, his favorite place to go to in Kyoto. The owner of the shop came over to tell me that. I didn't know that at the time. And I said, uh, his name is uh, Toshia. I said, Toshia, let me show you my contact list. I went to my contact list. I pulled up Steve Jobs' direct phone number, obviously, when he was alive. I had done business with uh, Steve over about the last uh, three or four decades out here. So it was pretty cool. That is where I ended up going to celebrate my birthday. And what I did on my birthday, and he knew it was my birthday, I brought him a bottle of Kakunko as a nice gift. What did he have for me? He had a bottle of Kakunko that he gave to me as a gift. He and I are brothers, that's Toshii. Folks, have a terrific Thursday. I'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care.